Hey everybody, Jason Burmis here, and the New York Times has now reported on, but all but whitewashed, the latest accusations against Conor McGregor and the newest alleged sexual assault. Now here's the thing, I've been covering this since uh, January of this year, probably uh, longer than any mainstream journalist or alternative media guy out there in the United States. And I got I to gotta admit, I, I've been emotional when I've reported these things because um, they're pretty heavy and it upsets me when power obfuscates the truth. But I promised myself that this video is going to be me simply reading you the New York Times article and then calmly going over the facts one by one. And if you'd like to do that with me, uh, please go to my Twitter, which is obviously right here. And there is a pinned tweet where after I read the New York Times article, we're going to go through those articles and just the quotes that I've named so you can get a better understanding and a better picture of what the New York Times is hiding from you on behalf of the power structure, on behalf of the UFC, WME Entertainment, ESPN, Disney, and other interested parties that make a lot of money off of this guy. So as I said, I'm going to keep this super calm. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised this hasn't started trending uh, yet. It, it may start to trend later, but we'll see. So we're going to read the whole thing. And piece by piece, I may give commentary. But then, again, we're going to keep it as calm as possible. And we're going to go over what's really going on there. A second complaint came as the mixed martial arts star waited to see whether prosecutors would charge him in another case. And by the way, um, that paperwork for the December case has now been filed with the Department of Public Prosecution. Um, I'll show you where you can find that information on my videos, uh, but I have covered it in the last week or so on my channel. So let's continue, okay? Conor McGregor, one of the biggest stars in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, is being investigated over a sexual assault allegation the second case in less than 12 months, according to people, people familiar with the matter. The most recent allegation relates to a complaint that a woman in her 20s was sexually assaulted in a vehicle parked outside a Dublin pub last week, according to the people who spoke on condition of anonymity because of the Irish laws surrounding investigations. So, again, that's why he's being named as an Irish sports star in, um, in uh, Ireland, okay? McGregor, a 31-year-old mixed martial arts fighter who is one of the world's highest paid athletes, has not been charged. And the police have yet to interview him about the allegation. And this is um, the newest allegation. And as I've reported, the police sources are, are saying it could take two, three, maybe even more, two, three weeks, maybe even more to actually uh, talk to him. But they have, and again, they didn't say this in this article, but they did uh, contact him. They got the clothes that were involved, and they also took his car. Uh, where the incident is alleged to have happened. Uh, they also have CCTV camera footage leading up to and after the event. And uh, apparently afterwards, Connor went to some party. This has all been in the mainstream in Europe. He was already uh, waiting to hear whether he would be charged following a complaint that he assaulted a woman in Dublin last December. And this was the original whitewash article. The police passed the findings of the investigation in their first case to Ireland's prosecutor's officer earlier this year. Okay, so it, it, it is in the prosecution's office, as I've reported. Uh, McGregor was arrested in January, questioned by law enforcement authorities, and released pending further investigation per the usual protocol in, in a criminal investigation in Ireland and much of the rest of Europe, where the formal charge does not necessarily follow an arrest. The allegations have not been proved. Look how, how quick they are to take McGregor's side. Now I'm going to show you why, when you see what's coming up here, this is the PR. This is the public relations spin that they're selling you. Okay? Um, and the existence of the investigations does not imply that McGregor is guilty of any crime. No, just all of the evidence, according to a police source. But we're going to get to that. Conor McGregor is frequently the subject of rumors a publicist for the fighter said in an emailed statement. He emphatically denies any report accusing him of sexual assault. So there's the PR guy. There's the uh, nonsense one-liner. Okay? 
But a lawyer for McGregor in Dublin did not respond to messages seeking comment. Um, and here it is, born in a tough working class section of Dublin, McGregor has uh, helped propel the UFC's popularity worldwide, though he has been involved in a flurry of police cases throughout his career, much more than they're reporting. And again, we will get to that because the case in December, a lot of people think that was the first sexual assault allegation against him. It was not. There were other allegations uh, that were quietly dropped. But again, we're going to go over those. Flanked by two bodyguards, McGregor appeared in court last week to answer charges of assaulting an elderly man in a pub in April. That case is still pending, with another hearing scheduled for next month. Security footage purporting uh, to show the incident, purporting to show the incident, I mean, everybody's seen it, was leaked to the celebrity news website TMZ. So again, instead of stating a video that is publicly available clearly shows Conor McGregor punching an old man in the face when he refuses his proper 12 whiskey, they say that. This is the New York Times. This is supposed to be the real respected news, guys. Okay? McGregor has participated in only one UFC fight since 2016, a defeat uh, last October to Khabib Nurmagomedov, Habib Nurmagomedov, uh, that ended in disgrace when a brawl broke out between their rival camps at the end of the fight. Notice how they try to smear Habib in this? In disgrace. No, your reporting on this is a disgrace. McGregor announced his retirement from the sport in March, only to hint several times that he would get back into the ring. The UFC, which did not respond to a request for comment from the New York Times, has not announced any upcoming bouts featuring McGregor. No, in fact, Dana White had to come out and say that the Frankie Edgar happen, uh, fight would not happen and that he thinks he'll fight next year. You got to ask yourself if he's if he's even allowed to leave the country at this point with all of these different cases surrounding him, the assault of the old man, the December case that's now had its paperwork go to the Department of Public Prosecution, and now this one. Okay, but again, the UFC's already spun it through Dana White, and we'll get there to it. An obvious lie, a lie I covered when it happened. Uh, the Irish news media have reported on both sexual assault cases, but without naming McGregor. That is true. Laws in Ireland restrict the news media from identifying individuals charged with rape unless they are convicted, which has not happened in either instance. News outlets reporting the identity of a suspect before a charge often uh, face costly libel and breach of privacy uh, lawsuits in Ireland. Publication after a charge is filed could lead to a more serious contempt or court indictment. In fact, RTE... Um, had somebody who published, took a picture of the facts that proved that McGregor had been arrested in the December case in mid-January. And then that was also, I mean, I've had people say that was rumors, but that was also confirmed by the fact that it was reported on they may be fined for putting his name out there, okay? And, and you just read why. Newspapers and broadcasters have instead linked the two cases and typically describe the suspect as a famous or well-known Irish sports star. I Ireland's police service, known as the Guardi, uh, declined to comment on the profession of the person accused of the second assault. Investigations are ongoing, and no arrests at this time have been made. Uh, owing to the nature of the investigation, we will not be commenting further at this time. McGregor's rapid rise, and again, here we go promoting the guy again, and obfuscating how serious these situations are. McGregor's rapid rise from a destitute uh, mixed martial arts fighter living with his mother to the UFC's most prized asset has become one of the biggest stories in Ireland in the past decade. McGregor has largely enjoyed the attention, regularly talking on social media to brag uh, to show the fruits of his newfound wealth, which peaked in August 2017 when he participated in one of the most lucrative boxing matches, a loss to the undefeated boxing champion Floyd Mayweather. McGregor, nicknamed the Notorious, has cultivated a bad boy reputation through over-the-top behavior that has some uh, occasions led to brushes with the law. You see all this? You see all this whitewash? Them not focusing on what this really means? Last July, he pled guilty to a charge of disorderly contact after he threw a hand truck at a bus carrying the Mergamedov and other fighters returning to their hotel from Barclays Center in Brooklyn Two fighters were injured by shattered glass. Yeah, Ray Borg got it in his eye. Rose had a small, like, uh, injury. Who was it? Michael Kaseya had to have his uh, fight postponed because what had happened. And remember, they broke an entering on that Barclays Center uh, as well. But, again, whitewashing it. 
Although he has not fought for a year, McGregor continues to be one of the UFC's most talked about stars. Yes, he makes them big money. He has a close relationship with the organization's president, Dana White, who this week ruled out a December fight hinted at by McGregor between the Irishman and featherweight Frankie Edgar. White has been more tight-lipped when it comes to commenting on the allegations facing McGregor. Exactly. And this is where lie, um, White lied completely, and nobody called him out on it. Gee, and the guy who, uh, called, who asked White, I think it's Brian something, I wonder why he didn't follow up on it or why other reporters. Oh, that's right. Aren't you featured in the new Chuck and Tito documentary? I bet you, you MMA journalists love that TV time, huh? You love getting promoted by ESPN and Disney. Why ask a tough question? So here's where Dana White, and I covered this, told a complete lie. In August, five months after the New York Times first named McGregor in connection with the first sexual assault allegation, White said he knew zero about it before adding, to be honest with you, the back and forth that I've had with him about it, he says that it is not him. It's somebody else. So I don't know. And yet, when McGregor talked to the Guardian, it was reported that he said that he was the person in the incident and that it was consensual. But here we go. Now we're going to go over this thread that is so important to really look at. And if you want to see my previous coverage, again, I've been covering it since January. You simply go to my playlist section right here and check it out. But here we go. Okay, and we're going to show you a lot of these articles. So I, uh, I pumped out that they had whitewashed and toned this down for the mainstream media. And uh, Fight Oracle, also known as Front Row Brian, who follows me and sometimes we talk, um, said the Irish Mirror exposed it. I said they certainly did. I agree. They did some of the most in-depth work on the first case. Absolutely they did. And I cite them constantly in my videos. Uh, and I said, look, I just wish the American press would report on even half of the details that they have published. And here we go, guys. So this is where he says there are virtually no details. <laughs> that's wrong. And, and I'm like, come on, man, that's a whitewash. So here they are. Here's are some of the details, okay? This is out of irishcentral.com, but you can also, I believe, find the same quote in the Irish Independent. This is 12, 13, 18, just a couple of days after the incident. So long before McGregor gets arrested. And remember, we didn't hear about this in the States until April. Think, let that sink in that it took four plus months for it to even be reported here. This is a quote. At the end of the day, there is no doubt that this young lady suffered a horrendous ordeal. The examinations and all, not some, I want to I reiterate that, not some of the evidence, all of the evidence shows that she was raped and very badly assaulted in that penthouse suite. Now, here's the thing. When we say all the evidence, they took witness statements. And a lot of people will say, well, what about her statement? She didn't make one for a long time. She was scared to death, but we'll get there. So in other words, at this time when there's a forensics ex examination and there's been statements made, you have a source inside the investigation, a senior source saying that all the evidence, not some, not a little bit, points to the woman being raped and very badly assaulted, okay? And again, I'm being calm. I'm reading mainstream more sources. There's no doubt that this video is going to be suppressed. There's no doubt this video is going to be demonetized and confirmed by manual review. Uh, Ryan Gennaro says, go on tinfoil with John Fitch and expose this. Uh, I don't know if Fitch is going to come on with me, but I'm already in the works on doing a full tinfoil hat podcast with Sam Tripoli and XG. So I'm looking forward to that. So here it is. 12, 12, 18. This is the headline from the mirror. Mom who accused Irish sports star of rape was found battered and bruised. Now, when they were dis discussing the statements made by others, okay, remember, this is on the 12th. Our last article is on the 13th. So, again, witnesses have already made statements. These statements are hugely detailed, and complex and go into the minute detail of every aspect on the night and the attack. So we have one senior source saying all the evidence, and now we know that at that evidence includes witness statements. This is important. So here's another one, 12, uh, 1218, headline, 
Woman allegedly raped by Irish sports store was choked during ordeal. So now we're getting a better picture of how she was horrendously beaten, how she was bruised, and um, how she resisted. L listen, there were clear marks of choking around the woman's neck shortly after the incident on Monday morning. And then it says the woman resisted and bit the man in question. Okay. So that's out of the Irish mirror as well. It's, uh, it's again, one of the biggest places that they did real work. So 12, 12, 18. Remember, this is all before January of this year this was being reported. But our mainstream media is supposed to be trusted. They can't even report on somebody who makes Disney money. Um, she was left with bruising after the alleged attack while there was also suggestions of bleeding. So now... She's bleeding, she's bruised, she's choked, she bit the guy. All of these details are readily available. Oh, yeah, and he had been accused even before this. Remember I told you that this December ca court uh, case that went to police and the allegations made public, this was not the first time this man did this, allegedly, or at least was accused of doing it. He was previously accused of attacking another woman in recent months at a separate venue. And if you read that article from The Sun, it says that that case was quietly dropped. Okay, that case was quietly dropped. Trying to keep my composure here, trying not to get upset, trying to lay the facts out for you as easily as I can. And, by the way, he was not just accused of one other assault, but several prior to December. Okay? Not one, but several. This is a police source. This is the Irish Mirror again. There are reports uh, of previous incidents uh, happened also involving the sports star and members of his entourage in Ireland. These also may be revisited. Okay? So now the cops are saying, oh, he's been accused of this before. Those cases were dropped, but we may actually start looking into those cases after this one, where another source said, all of the evidence says that she was raped and went through a horrendous ordeal. All right, so here in that same article, or I'm sorry, in this article we're going over, there's two big things here that I think we need to go over. A lot of people say, um, oh, well, this woman, you know, she's in it for the money or she's lying. Well, this is days after the attack, and I want you to understand, this is, again, a senior police source saying this. She is in a deep state of distress and she is absolutely terrified. She was allegedly beaten viciously during the incident. And she is terrified for her life. She is in absolute fear. And then it goes on to say, part of the problem is the sports star is linked to people who are dangerous. The Kinahan, the Irish Mafia, are some of his cohorts. And the police are saying part of the problem is the sports star is linked to people who are dangerous all on the public record, okay? Now, this is in the same article. Now, this gives you an idea of some of the evidence they have outside of the witness statements, okay? Forensically, the hotel room has been identified and examined by forensic experts. CCTV has been downloaded, and they have spoken to staff. And if you read about the CCTV footage they have, they may not have it of the actual incident, but they have all of it leading up and after the incident. And remember, if this woman was badly bruised and maybe bleeding and beaten, that means they have a beaten and bruised woman leaving the incident, okay? The woman has handed over her blood-stained clothing, again, more evidence that she was bleeding, to Gardy, and that is now being examined. Okay, let's continue. Continue. We get to the 27th. This is after Christmas. This is now two plus weeks after the event. Again, all these people that think that this woman was in it for the money or it didn't happen or it was consensual, and we'll get to that in a second. She's still too afraid to make a statement. It is understood she, presented, she was presented in a highly traumatized state with extensive bruising. Although she has been in contact with Gardy about the alleged rape, she has not made a formal statement. Now, Eventually, she does make that formal statement. McGregor is arrested, and Connor tells the police that everything you read above was consensual. And this is the Independent. Above was the Irish Times. 
It's understood that the, during the interview, the suspect admitted he had sex with the woman, claiming it was consensual. Okay. So now we're going to get to the only part that may be just a little bit of speculation. And honestly, when you look at the evidence here, there is not much speculation whatsoever. Okay? And I said, and then, of course, we have the leaked WhatsApp messages involving known journalists that cover McGregor like Michelle Dardis. And I'm going to go to something here. This is by Michelle Dardis, 1-1-2018. So about 11 months before the attack, Michelle Dardis, okay, a reporter for VIP, a magazine, the home of Irish celebrities, is in these uh, messages. She's not the only one. In some of my original videos, I lay it out for you, uh, the evidence that these uh, WhatsApp messages between journalists are absolutely 100% real, okay? So let's, let's read them. See, there's Michelle Dardis. You can look up Pippa Doyle, another one of these journalists. And this is just before it broke, okay? McGregor is getting named for the rape either today or tomorrow. The Mail UK and Ireland pulled all their staff into a massive meeting about it last night. And by the way, um, if you read those articles that I just cited that are in the thread, right? That Again, none of this is really new, right? It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's all going down. This is the real deal. We have to, we have to really realize that. Real deal stuff here, guys. Oh, stop. Oh, no. Poor D. Yeah, they're the ones breaking it because obviously over in the UK, uh, they can't afford to be sued for millions and millions if he claims it's not him. The DPP, the Department of Public Prosecution, got the file Thursday night, uh, though, after the sports star handed themselves in. So here it is. A lot of people were talking about um, January, right? These are way before that uh, January incident. The, the, the According to the WhatsApp messages, McGregor actually turned himself in right after the incident, long before she made a, a formal statement. And they said there was, there, you know, what are you turning yourself in for? She had, he hadn't been named. Also, according to the source, that's why D hasn't gone public with the new baby. She's done. Also, the male's probably going to name the poor girl it happened to. And again, none, I, I don't know the name of the girl that it happened to, but we do know, again, through these articles, that she was a family friend. That she knew them all the time. She did make a statement, uh, as did the other girl who was with her at the hotel. So, once again, um, the statement by this other girl, she didn't go there alone. This was like a party, okay? Right, so here we go. The moment we've all been waiting for, the inside track on the McGregor incident. I can't say this is 100% truth, but the source has spoken to one of the detectives working in the case. So, again... I'm not presenting this as 100% truth. I'm telling you, I believe, okay, I believe that uh, this stuff is the real deal, okay? I, I don't think that these text messages or WhatsApp messages are fake, okay? Um, Sunday night, McGregor and his goons are boozing in town somewhere, but don't know which bar exactly that's come out. A bird comes up to him and introduces herself and says that her boyfriend is friends with Aaron McGregor's boyfriend, and Connor is giving it uh, the big one in front of his mates and starts saying, uh, would you uh, go out of the way that coming over talking about your boyfriend? Tell the truth, you're looking for the ride, and his mates are all laughing, and she's like, no, I'm not. Okay, so in other words, she came over and just to say that, you know, hey, you know, I, I know this person. And it ends with him telling her he guarantees he'll be riding her later. Later on, the party moves back to the Beacon Hotel in Sandyford. And uh, your one comes back to the session. And McGregor is trying it on with your one. And she is like, get off. And uh, he starts getting handsy and physical with her. She ends up slapping him. And he flips and beats her up. And holds her, uh, let's see, let's see, uh, here, and then holds her down and rapes her. She's on her flowers, which there means she's on her period. So he actually rapes her up the ass. She's obviously distraught and goes straight to the SATU in Rotunda. And SATU call the guardy, or the guards, who arrived there and try and find out what happened. They don't get much info out of her that night. 
other than it was in a hotel on the south side somewhere. Not sure uh, why they thought it was in Dublin, too. But the guards in Pierce Street and Donnybrook had assigned it anyway. Then McGregor and his lawyer present at the Black Rock Garda station the next day looking to give a statement and the guards in Blackrock are like, what the fuck did he come in here and told him they didn't know what he was about, and he left. Sound like an innocent man to you? Then somewhere over the next few days, it came to their attention that the incident happened in the Beacon, and that's why he came to Blackrock. The girl doesn't know uh, what she wants to do now, whether she wants to go through with the complaint or what so, uh, we'll have to wait and see, but that's the story from the first semi-reliable source I have heard. Okay? The detective dealing with this now is very experienced and has these cases and has dealt with putting away Graham Dwyer. He's fucked. Totally. I saw her four days later. She was in bits. So she must have uh, in the right state after it happened. Okay? And here's one of the most disturbing details about this thing. He didn't use a condom, came inside her, left her covered in bruises, and she had throat in- injuries which were consistent with someone held in a chokehold like the ones he applied in the ring. His DNA was all over her. He tried to ride her vaginally, then rammed her tampon up, her, up into her cervix so she had to have it surgically removed. She did make a statement, as, as did the other girl who was in her hotel, but not a formal statement, so that... So, again, she said that she had been raped, but she refused to name him, as, as you've seen. So, a lot of people have tried to say that these uh, messages are fake, but you just take one look at who's in them and the veracity and how some of these things have come out in the mainstream media, and you have to ask yourself, are they fake? I doubt it. Here's the biggest problem. In um, Ireland, uh, less than 10% of sexual assaults end in convictions. Let me say that again. In Ireland, less than 10% of sexual assaults end in convictions. And right now, I'm really just going to ca- cascade. Everybody can see these. Okay, these articles, this isn't Jason Burmis. I'm not, you know, everything I just cited there. Everything I just cited there. Let's just pop through them really quick. You know, I didn't write these. This isn't me saying it. And, I, and I've really done my best to, you know, calm myself, not, not go nuts on this video because I I want people to understand this is a very real thing. This is a very serious thing and we should be treating it as such and we should stop promoting this person. Okay. Think about it. This is the person that's on the cover of, you know, the ES or uh, I'm sorry, the latest MMA uh, game, the EA sports video game, UFC undisputed three. This is the biggest draw in combat sports right now. And Ari Emanuel, Dana White, WME Entertainment, and Disney will do everything in their public relations PR spin power. Okay? Based other allegations. Um, To hide these facts from you. Okay? I, I really, I need you to go check these things out yourself. You don't have to believe Jason Burmis. You know, But I'm sorry, I just will not take part in uh, fanboys that continue to support this guy and say that these allegations aren't real, period. Because they're as real as it gets. And once again, if you really want to see them, it's pinned on my Twitter right now. Please go check it out. Um, you guys are going to be the ones that make the difference. You know, tweet this video out to every MMA fighter, every MMA journalist, every mainstream outlet. You can tweet it out to Disney and their executives. We got to make a difference now. And uh, I did my best to remain really reserved here. That being said, guys, if you like this video, now's the time to thumbs it up and share it. Like I said, although we really got to get this out on Twitter and other social media, I'm doing these videos three to seven times a day, um, all for free. I'm also a documentary filmmaker, Loose Change Final Cut, Fabled Enemies, Invisible Empire, A New World Order to Find, and Shade the Motion Picture are all available for free in another separate playlist called Documentaries. I encourage you to check them out. And if you appreciate what I do, if you like what I do, 
Uh, it's 1019. I'm doing these every month. I should be closer to $3,000 if I really want to make that $5,000 goal, uh, which I'm really pushing for this month because I want to keep being able to do this. I want this to be economically viable um, and I don't want any strings attached. I'm beholden to nobody and I will never be beholden to anybody but the truth. And that's the deal. So like I said, we're probably going to do an extensive uh, podcast on this subject um, of this obfuscation of truth with uh, Sam Tripoli and XG on the uh, tinfoil hat cast. So I'm looking forward to that. And with that being said, guys, I love you. And thank you for taking a look at this. And let's, let's get this info out here. Let's not let this stand. Let's never let this man be in any other cage other than a prison cell. I'll see you on the flip side.